everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to essentially play with isometric tile sets. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll get right into it and we'll add a few things to our scene. So we'll add obviously a tile map. And then I'm also going to add a camera. However, I'm going to disable the camera for now. Okay. So in our tile map, we're going to be actually looking at tiles before we go into isometric tiles. So I want to look at the idea of selecting tiles and that kind of thing before we actually move into isometric tiles. So let's obviously make our tile set. So let's go over here to tile set. And for the cell quadrant, I'm going to do 128. And you'll see why in a second. I'm going to do 128 for all of these. And it will be square. Now let's go to our tile set. And now I have this example tile map or tile that I've added here. And this tile is 128 by 128. And I also have this other one that's tile selected that's transparent with a blue outline. And it's the exact same size, it just has a blue outline. So now, when I go here and I start drawing, it'll look like that. But if I, let's say I draw on top, it'll look like that. However, now this is gonna be the fun part we want to emulate as if I selected a tile. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a layer. So now when I have tile map, if I manually do this, obviously, it can look like this. So we want our in-game to look like this, where I have my tile map or my tiles, and I have my mouse hovering the tile so I can select them. So let's actually delete all this. And obviously the selected selection thing will be on layer zero or one and the actual tile map will be on or the actual tiles the grass tiles will be on tile a uh, layer zero so let's do that let's go into our tile map and create a script for this okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at we're gonna have a few things a few variables and when i say few i really mean two so we're gonna have a grid size and dictionary now grid size i'm actually gonna make it yeah, let's do four for now. So this will make our grid size four by four because this guy is actually kind of big. So because it's 128 by 128, um, if I can draw, please. We go one, two, three, four. That's four by four. And that's like a lot of the screen already. So as you can see, the screen, the tiles are really big. Okay, so essentially there's two things that we want to do. First off, we want to fill the map with some tiles. So the way we can do that is with a function called set cell. Let me copy it over. We say set cell with all these things. Now let me explain what all these numbers are because it's very confusing. Obviously the vector, so well, we'll go by one by one. So let me say set cell and it'll give me all the th things that I should be putting into it. So we have layer. So that's the layer that we're going to draw on, which is zero for our graphs, the coordinates of the tile. So in this case, we're going to ma make a for loop so we can do four by four, which we'll do in a second. We have the source ID, which is the ID, which is the actual tile here. So it's not the actual tile, but it's the source ID, meaning so if I have multiple tile sets or multiple tiles or whatever, they are seen as different IDs. So here you see ID zero. This one is ID one. You can't see it, but it is it's just, you're going to have to trust me. I just don't want to click it. And then we have Atlas coordinates. Now this is the actual tile. So if I were to go here and hover it, if you have multiple tiles, you'll be able to see that the, it actually says the source, the Atlas coordinates and the alternative. Now the alternative is the last thing over here. So alternative tile. So I'd write in zero. If you have an alternative tile, you could, I don't know, use that, but usually I don't, most people don't, uh, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, now let's take a look at the grid size or the for loops. So this is what we want. So we're going to say for loop X in grid size and for loop Y in grid size. So this will essentially for loop four times in X, right? Because grid size is four. So we're going to do four, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to do four, more in the y axis essentially creating a four by four grid now what happens is if i play it'll give me a four by four grid awesome because as you can see i didn't draw anything i just did it in code so let's actually look into how i can add this into a dictionary now the reason we're going to add this into a dictionary is because now i can have each tile in a dictionary as i create it 
And then I can also access those tiles, not only within the tile map, but also within the dictionary. So the way we do this is by saying dictionary string of the vector two with the X and Y coordinates. And then we're going to say equal to type and whatever else you want to add into it. So you don't have to say dirt. Um, in fact, in this case, we'll say grass, but you can say whatever you want. So it kind of depends, obviously, like there's some tiles you might not have grass as it really depends on how you do your uh, procedural like generation. So if you have a procedural generation, which I might actually do soon, um, I'll show you how to kind of adjust the types and stuff like that. So we'll do procedure. We can do procedural uh, generation and we can set the grass or the tile sets to different types, right? If that makes sense. Okay. So now here, let's actually print this to prove that it works. So let's say print dick. And what now what we can do is I can just play, go to output. And here we can see that we can actually have everything. So the reason why we use the vector two as the key is so that we have access to each dictionary inside of that key from a position. So zero, zero is one dictionary, zero, one is another dictionary, one, two, three, for example, right? And so on. So now we can get access to a tile through its position, which is really useful because now what we can do is we can add a function process or a process function. And in here, we'll say variable tile is equal to local to map with our get global mouse position. Now this will essentially print the, or not print, it'll get access to the tile that my mouse is on top of, which is a really cool function that is very useful. Okay. Now what we can do is the reason, uh, one reason we did this, one reason we got access to it. There's obviously different ways we can do this, but one reason I did the dictionary is now I can actually check to see if it has that tile. So the tile is returned as a vector or a position. So now I can say if it has or check if it has that tile, right? So I have to convert it to a string because I think it's a vector. And so now I have to convert it to a string. And then if I do have it, I can just say, okay, let's set the tile to the source ID is one. Let me actually double check that all these are right. Okay, so, oh my gosh. Set cell, so we have layer one. Okay, perfect. Uh, source ID is one. Is that right? Let's see. Source ID. Source is one. Yeah, that's right. With tile and vector one. Okay, awesome. So now nothing will happen. However, oh no, sorry. That is what should happen. Awesome. So now we can see that our tiles are being selected. So this will allow us to actually select the tiles. Now what we can do or what else we can do is we can actually erase the tiles as well bef right before we select it. So the way we can do that is on the layer one, we can also delete them right before I select it. So instead of 20, we'll just do grid size. So now every time I select something, it'll, or not even every time, just in general, it'll keep deleting or erasing any tile I draw on the first layer. So now it gives the illusion as if I am selecting a tile which is cool. And one other thing that was me testing. I think it's me testing there. Okay. We're going to ignore that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And that's it. So now we can cover different tiles and each tile has a specific cell. So we can actually, let me kind of prove this a little more or show this a bit more. So now what we can say is say dictionary dot print string tile. And so now we can get access to a specific tile. So as you can see, they're all printing the same thing. However, if I, let's say um, position, let's add a, another thing here. Obviously that's not how you spell position, but let's just add, let's add a string thing like this and I'll just play. Now, if I go to output, each one has a specific position. So I can 
very easily manipulate these positions or things inside of this dictionary as I create it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, in the next video, I'll be showing you guys how to essentially add this to isometric. And I will also be showing you how to add a player. So uh, I can actually show you that real quick before I end the video. So this is what it should look like eventually. So we will be able to move and by clicking, we'll also be able to, what will we be able to do? I forgot, uh, move with our keyboard. So um, stay tuned, subscribe, and definitely check out that next video. I'll see you guys next time.